In this video for section 10.3, we're going to be looking at a different situation where we have uh, comparing means from two samples. This time, instead of independent samples, they're going to be paired. So the values in one sample are matched with the values in the second sample. So here's an example of why we might want to do this. If we are comparing two paint mixes and the number of square feet that one gallon of paint will cover. We could give one gallon of paint to one painter and another gallon to another painter, have them both use up all their paint, and then compare the total area covered. These would be independent samples. The problem with this design, though, is that different people paint differently. So one painter might be making a thicker coat, and that might account for the difference in uh, area covered, not the type of paint. And so we want to control for this um, by having the same person testing both types of paint and telling them to paint in the same way. So sometimes we see these as before and after measurements. So we might um, measure something, have some sort of intervention, and then take another measurement. Or uh, we might have the same group of people repeating a process with different products. So like our paint example, where we have the same person use one type of paint and then use the second type of paint. So we're going to look at our ink cartridge example again here, um, where we are comparing the name brand and the generic ink cartridges. And this time we're going to do the test using paired samples. So instead of giving one group of people a name brand cartridge and giving a second group of people a generic cartridge, now we are giving each user both types of cartridges and we're having them use both. And the reason for this is because people print different things. And so if some people print a lot of pictures, those are going to use more ink and we wanna control for the effect of what you are printing. Um, so presumably these printer users are printing the same types of things when they're using both types of cartridges. Um, so we have six users and we have uh, their data here. So we're going to start with our claim and our claim here is the same as it was before, um, which is that name brand prints more pages than generic. And then we're going to use our claim to write our null and alternative hypothesis. So as usual, I'm going to start with the alternative here. So when we're doing paired samples, um, a lot of times instead of having the subtraction like we saw before, we're going to use mu uh, sub d, which stands for the difference. So um, when we wrote our hypothesis for this before, we used mu1 minus mu2. Um, the one was the name brand, and the two was the generic. And we said that that, um, for our alternative hypothesis, was greater than zero. So instead of having mu name brand minus mu generic, I'm going to write mu d, which is the difference between name brand and generic. And so my alternative hypothesis is that that difference is greater than zero. That means my null hypothesis is that that difference is less than or equal to zero. So this is what you're going to see in the homework. Um, you're going to see the null and alternative hypotheses written with this mu d, which again stands for the difference. So here's my null and alternative hypotheses. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my test. So I have this data entered into Minitab. I just typed it in. Uh, generally in the homework, you're going to be copying and pasting um, the data from my lab into this Minitab spreadsheet. Uh, usually it's a lot more numbers than you wanna type in by hand, but this one is pretty small. So one thing that you notice about Minitab that's different from Excel is that Minitab has this um, uh, row for column headers. And so instead of putting column headers in row one, like you would with Excel, you're going to put them in this top blank row, and then your data can start in row one, uh, which is kind of a nice feature. So what I'm going to do to do my test is I'm going to go to stat, basic statistics, and paired T. And then click on paired T. 
I have each sample is in a column here. Um, I don't have the summarized data. If I did, I would switch to that. But each sample is in a column. And then when I click in the sample one box, it gives me the options here to select the column for sample one. And again, we're doing sample one minus sample two. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting those in the right places. Since when I uh, set this up with my hypotheses, I set it up so that it was name brand minus generic. That means name brand is number one, generic is number two. And so sample one is the name brand and sample two is the generic. So put those in the correct boxes here. Um, the printer user doesn't go in a box because that's just an identifier. Then I'm going to click on options um, and then hypothesize difference. Again, I wanna make sure that that's correct. In this situation, my hypothesized difference is zero. Um, because I'm not saying a number amount of pages uh, that I think the name brand is more, just that it's more. And then I want to set my alternative hypothesis uh, to match my alternative, which is that the difference uh, is greater than the hypothesized difference. So I'm going to select that. Um, notice up here, again, it's showing me sample 1 minus sample 2. Um, so that sample one is the one that comes first and then sample two is the one that's subtracted. So click OK, click OK again, and then here are my results. I can move this down. Um, one thing uh, to point out, when you have a situation where you have a column that has some sort of identifier uh, label, that's a clue that it's a situation where you have a paired test. Um, because whatever individual this is, is providing you with a result in both samples. So that can be a little hint um, that it's paired and not independent. So here's my results. Um, it's giving me the mean and standard deviation of each data set. Um, it's giving me some other things and then scroll to the bottom to get the T value and P value. So T value of 1.65, I may need to enter that. My P value is what I need to determine if I am rejecting the null hypothesis p-value is 0 0.079. So I'm going to go back here and write that down. And then uh, what I'm doing with the p-value is comparing it to alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. Is the p-value less than alpha? No, it is not. So p-value is not less than alpha. Um, p-value is greater than alpha. So since 0.079 is greater than 0.05, we fail to reject. So fail to reject my null hypothesis. And that means that we do not have evidence that the name brand cartridge prints more pages.